So I want to talk about children a little bit more and the concept of how children work within build objects. So I'm going to start by creating three skeleton build objects. They're not going to have anything inside of them. It's just going to be a named object, common named object, common named object. Using the same HTML structure that we are just kind of using too with the input bin. So our end goal is we want to build this HTML structure. We want to build a div with ID input bin and a class of field. And inside of this div, I want to create an input field with name, first name, and a label that says first name. Now to build this HTML structure, let me just pan over here a little bit. To build this HTML structure, I'm going to need three build objects. The first build object, and keep in mind this again exists in build.json. The first build object, let's call input bin. Now, while I usually try to use the ID as the build object's name, that's not always the case. And I will show you a way later on to determine the build object name of any DOM element later on, from with, you know, after the application has been built. But to continue, build.json, we're going to have a build object called input bin. And since it's JSON, I'm going to use quotes. And then we're going to have input, I'm going to call it input1. Input1 just in this case represents a build object that I've created that's kind of a generic input field. And the same is going to go for label. So these three build objects would typically have filler inside of them. They would have attributes of ID and class. They would have, the input would have an attribute of name and a type of input. And label would have a type of label and content first name. And we're going to go and review that in a second. But what I want to focus on right now is children. So inside of input bin, there would have been a child, children property and an array. And in this array, it would have had input one and label one. This is one of the properties of input bin. This will automatically, when it's building, will go and automatically build input one and label one inside of input bin. So to accomplish this structure, we use this, this property and this array. Now, you can have as many children as you want. You can have 30 children. And children can be inside more children. So label could, be, could have been a div with two more elements. And those two more elements could have had two more elements. It keeps building down. Um, there's, there's no limit to that. Um, every child always understands its parent, and every parent always understands its child, but the relationship within build up, between build objects goes no further than that. And that will make more sense when we talk about dynamic data. So let's just quickly go through, let's review how we would populate input bin to match, the to match a build object that would build this. So input bin, just again to, to get it a little bigger, is going to have, we don't need to specify quantity because we're just wanting to build one, and so by default there's one. We don't need to specify a type because by default the type is div, 
But we do need to specify attributes, which is an object, the key or the property name being ID. Right? These all need to be in quotes since it's JSON again. And it's going to be ID input bin and class field. I know that's small, but and we'll close out that object. And then it will have the children, like we just talked about, of input one and a label one. That is a build object. That's a very simple build object, but it can be very powerful. This build object with these children can be reused over and over and over again. And reusing these children or wrapping these children in a different build object can be done by, we could create an input bin, bin 2 that still references input 1 and label 1 if we wanted. So that's input bin. Let's do input 1. Let's see what input 1 looks like since this one's going to use change the type. This is just this build object right here. Let's write that. So there's only one of them. So quantity defaults to one. Type, though, is not a div. We need to specify input. So we're going to say type input. And then we have a name of first name, so attributes. It's just a simple object where name is the property name or the key. And first name is the value. And that's it. And label. Label one. There's only one of them, so quantity defaults to one. Type is going to be label. And with HTML5, we get it's becoming more standard to use a variety of new HTML. Type will handle just about anything. If you entered A, B, C, D, E, F, G as a type, it would create a DOM element with tag name A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But in this case, it's going to be labeled. This is whatever that is. And there's no attributes. There's no CSS. There's no children. However, there is content. And content is used when you want to statically or dynamically populate an element with just some text. So in this case, first name. And however you, whatever you write in here gets appended to this element. So label one would look just like that. Very simple. 